Here we're going to do another example of a direct proof. We're going to be using the definitions for even and odd in this example. First, let's review the steps for doing a direct proof. First, we express the statement as a universal conditional statement. Next, we want to suppose the first part of that statement. So we're going to suppose x is an element of the domain and p of x is true. And then to conclude, we're going to try to deduce the second part of the conditional statement. Right? And the reason we do it this way, if you look at the last video we made, um, we, we did a truth table. And we can see how if we follow these steps, then we are guaranteed uh, to demonstrate the truth of the statement that we are proving. Okay, so in this example, um, we are going to prove that 10 nm plus 7 is odd for all n and m. Okay, so I'm going to do step one. Recall step one, we want to write it as a universal conditional statement. So once again, there's not an obvious if then in our statement, but I can uh, use the trick we showed in the last video to make an if then. So I'm going to say for all n and m in any domain, if n and m are integers, then 10 n m plus 7 is odd. Right. So we have our P uh, and Q. We have a conditional statement. We have an if then. And we have finished step one. Step two. Proof. So this is the actual proof. Step one is something you want to do before the actual proof. You want to write that out um, so you know how to set the proof up. It, later on and in the real world, as it were, people often skip step one. But for right now, I want you to be explicit about it to help with the setup. So the setup is going to be that we want to suppose this first part of our conditional statement. So I'm going to suppose that n and m are any integers. I could also write that m and n are particular but arbitrarily chosen integers, which is a little bit more formal, but it's not required. That's step two. Step three, recall we want to try to deduce q of x so in this case, q of x is this part down here. So I'm going to get write down my goal. We want to show that 10 and m plus 7 is odd. Right? And that is my goal. Now, we do not want to start with saying that 10 m and m is plus 7 is odd. Right? That's what we're trying to show. We cannot start with it. So what am I going to start with? Well, I'm going to start with what I've got. I have 10 n m plus 7. 
And if you recall the definition of odd, an odd number, n is odd, if and only if n equals 2k plus 1, where k is some integer. Right, and again, that k is just a placeholder. This could be any letter. I use k because it's traditional. Um, but so I want to get it in that form. Well, I need to get that plus 1 at the end. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to pull apart this 7 right here. So I'm going to say this is the same thing as 10nm plus 6 plus 1. All right, so I still have 7, but now I have that 1 on the end that I was looking for. Um, and this is by algebra. And then I'm going to pull out a 2 out of those first two terms. So this is 5nm plus 3 plus 1. This is pulling out... Two. Now, from integer closure properties, we know that if n and m are integers, that this is an integer. So I'm going to give it a name. Giving something, if I, if I have something here, I can give it a name. Technically, this is the principle of existential instantiation. Just means if something exists like that, I can name it. So I'm going to say let, and again, I'm, I'm just sticking with k because it's traditional, but I could have any variable here. Let k equal 5nm plus 3. And I'm going to notice, this is very important, notice that k is an integer due to closure integer closure properties, because here we have multiplication and addition of integers, and we know that integers are closed under both multiplication and addition. Okay, once this has a name, then I can go back and I can say, then what I'm starting with, 10nm plus 7, can be rewritten as 2k plus 1 using this, where k is an integer. And it seems like, it may seem like we're kind of harping on this fact that k is an integer, but that's really important because if k weren't an integer, the entire proof would fall apart. So in a sense, the fact that k is an integer is the point of this proof. It's the focal point. So it is important, and we do need to say it. Um, and now, looking at this, this is the definition of odd. Right? If I can make something equal this, 2k plus 1, where k is an integer, or 2 times any integer plus 1, then I know that that thing is odd. So I'm going to conclude, which is odd by definition. So therefore, 10nm plus 7 is odd for all integers. Let's clean this up a little bit. N and M. And that's what we were trying to show, which was to be shown. Right? That's what our goal said. And again, 
This is step three. Okay. Um, notice a couple of things. One is that there's a lot of English here. Right? This isn't a difficult proof to show that 10nm plus 7 is odd. But I want to make my proof into a story. I want to lead somebody by the hand so that there's no doubts, no confusion, nothing. So I follow these steps, step 1, 2, and 3, um, to do a direct proof where we clarify each step. It's really important to say that this is true where n and m are any integers, right? Any is a key word here. That's using the principle of, oh gosh, the generic particular, where we're saying, I don't care what n and m are as long as they are any integers. By keeping it generic, it's going to work for any n and m. And then we figure out, well, what's our goal in the proof? Well, we want to show it's odd. And again, that might be kind of obvious, but, and you don't have to. This is one that you don't have to do. Um, but clarifying, what is my plan with this proof? What am I trying to do? What's the end of my story? And then I go through and we tell the story. What's going on? Uh, we go through and we tell the story and we lay it out and everybody imagines somebody asking why at everything we do. Why can we do that first line? Because of algebra. Why can do we do the second line? Because we're pulling out of two. We can always give a name to things, but I want to point out why do I give the name to something? Well, because now I can talk about it being an integer. Right? So at every step of my proof, I'm explaining why. Why, do I did, why did I do something? Why did I do that? Why did I do this? And that is how you want to do a proof. Again, here is the uh, proof written, uh, typed out, in case you want to pause it here and clean up um, your work. I did not clarify here that these were by algebra. By algebra is the one time I may not justify something because, again, we're going to assume that everybody understands algebra, that I don't need to explain algebra, but it's still better practices to explain why you do something. So you may be wondering at this point, why on earth do we care? Why do we care about proving that some random um, 10nm plus 7 is odd or even? Why does it matter? Well, by itself, it doesn't matter. Right? What does matter is learning how to prove things. So this is like driver's ed, right? Do we care if you can drive around a parking lot? Well, driving around a parking lot or with an instructor may not be a lot of fun, but what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to drive yourself later on. That's the idea. What we're doing here is practice. For proving interesting things in the future. That's the goal here. So we're going to go on and we're going to do a couple more examples in this module. But that's the end of this one.